Hello everyone. This is Team 8, consisting of Kim Hui Won, Lee Nam Hoon, Cho A Ra, and Justin Chan. Today, we will be presenting about the Haida Alim Center in Baku, Azerbaijan. The presentation will cover a brief history and purpose of the Haida Alim Center, as well as construction, design, and communication issues of the building process. Starting with a brief history of the building, the Haida Alim Center was proposed as the main cultural center that will represent the future direction of the country of Azerbaijan. It aimed for design that broke the traditional Soviet landscape of the country and served as not only a representation of Azerbaijan's independence, but also as a movement of optimism for the country's future arts and culture. The center was constructed to serve as an auditorium, museum, plaza, and cultural meeting place with public areas, restaurants, and parking facilities for the city and its people. Large cultural events are often held at the Haida Arleev Center, as well as many different city and museum exhibitions. In addition, the center was also used as a part of Azerbaijan's bid for the 2016 Olympics. The building's exterior is meant to mimic topography, being a single continuous fluid surface that splits and curves around the entire exterior. The beginning of the exterior acts as the ground surface of the plaza and rises into the formation of the building. From there, undulations, bifurcations, and folds split the singular building into different sections, forming the museum, concert hall, and exhibition halls. The elaborate formations welcome visitors by guiding them towards the building as part of the landscape of the surrounding area. For some background and statistics on the building, the employer is the State Property Committee of Azerbaijan, located in Baku, Azerbaijan. Construction of the building started in 2007 and ended in 2012. The area of the building is about 57,500 meters squared with the cost estimating to be around $250 million USD. The architect in charge of the building was Zaha Hadid and her architecture firm, Zaha Hadid Architects, with the main contract contractor being DIA, with additional contractors of AKT, Tunsil Engineers, MERO, and many more. Next, we move into the design issues of the Haydar Aliyev Center, beginning with the design concept. The main design concept of the center is fluidity. The building blurs the conventional difference between an architectural object and urban landscape as the building envelopes around the area as an urban plaza, interior, and exterior of a building. You may ask, how can this complex freeform envelope be designed? Let's take a look at practical aspects to determine the modeling of the space structure for the freeform envelope enclosing this building. The general requirement for the structural system supporting the envelopes was to provide a construction system in which the cladding panels could materialize the skins. During the design, not only the visual appearance, but also the functional aspects are considered. To materialize the structure, a MERO TSK spherical node space frame system was chosen. The task of the structural geometry designer here is to use the possibilities and advantages of the chosen construction system, as well as its limitations, to design a spatial structural network which satisfies as many requirements as possible in the best way. The space frame geometry proposed for the Baku Cultural Center is commonly used square on offset square double layered grid as shown in this picture. This picture indicates the initial line length and orientation optimization. Within the framework of the general design parameters, a line length optimization coupled with the line orientation strategy has been followed whenever the possible to achieve a highly homogeneous and continuous configuration. There are three aspects modifying the initial geometric optimization. First, the support positions and interaction with internal architectural elements. Second, the variable distance between interior and exterior skins. And lastly, the apron at the museum and the dovetails of the library auditorium. The pictures above show in plan view the resulting internal and external grids for the both space structures, where the offset relationship between both grids can be appreciated. The pictures below are the examples of the interaction of double-layered structural grid with interior architectural elements. In this slide, these pictures show the variable inner skin distance and the enclosed space structure of the library auditorium and museum, respectively. Here are the apron and dovetail structures considered. They depict complex transition from the double layer space frame to the one layer construction of the curved steel sections like the pictures. Lastly, here is the complete space frame model with all the considerations I mentioned before. The final 3D line model of the space structures for the Bach Cultural Center serve as the basis of the subsequent structural analysis and CAD processing of the construction and for the generation of geometric information for the fabrication of the space frame components.
Also, the model constituted geometric constructional basis for the further engineering and construction of the enclosed and cladding surfaces. Next, I'll be discussing about the construction issues of the building. For some background on the framework, the Haydar Aliyev Center principally consists of two collaborating systems. One, the concrete structure, and two, the space frame system. In order to achieve large-scale column-free spaces that allow the visitor to experience the fluidity of the interior, vertical structure elements are absorbed by the envelope and curtain wall system. The space frame system enabled the construction of a free-form structure and saved significant time throughout the construction process, while the substructure was developed to incorporate a flexible relationship between the rigid grid of the space frame and the free-formed exterior cladding seams. The external solid skin is the most important architectural feature of the building. It has a 3D free-form geometry and is built up of several layers of different functions. Efforts were made to facilitate the design, production, logistics of the solid skin, and to achieve the unique appearance proposed by the architects. Let's take a look at the function and the substructure of panels used in this building. The first layer is a prefabricated weatherproofing tray system, which rests on top of the cord nodes of the main roof structure, space frame, and thus exhibits a faceted geometry. The trays consist of two U-sectioned purlins, a trapezoidal metal deck in between, a self-adhesive vapor barrier, a layer of rigid non-flammable rock insulation boards, and a weatherproofing membrane on top, and a special overlapping system covering the gaps between the two adjacent trays. This picture shows the substructure of one panel. The white solid skin is an open joint rain screening cladding system, which required a secondary substructure to fix it in the space frame. The secondary steel structure is attached to the nodes of the space frame by means of rods. From there, the secondary steel layer is responsible for interfacing between the faceted nodal regular space frame cord nodes geometry and the solid skin joint pattern defined by the architecture. Now, let's, take a, let's talk about the exterior skin of the panel I introduced earlier. The exterior skin is divided into the solid skin of the building and the plaza with a steady and visible transition in between. The total surface is about 39,100 meters squared for the solid skin and another 9,000 meters squared for the plaza. There are two main materials used to make the panels, GFRC, glass fiber reinforced concrete, and GFRP, glass fiber reinforced polyester. The GRFC is used on surfaces that are walked upon in the plaza spaces, and the GFRP is used as the roof cladding panels, which are lighter in weight and have a more comparable color and surface finish. The interior skin of the building has the same geometric complexity as the exterior skin. For the technical system, extensive research into the various options was needed to create these unique interiors. Two basic methods were investigated, a panel mold making approach as used for the exterior skin and a cold benching approach. Lastly, when constructing the Haider Aliyev Center, there were a lot of issues that resulted from miscommunication. To recap the complexity of the building, there are about 15,000 panels, each with an individually curved geometry in sizes of up to maximum of 1.5 meters wide and 7 meters long, none equal to each other. In addition, there are 40,000 meters of 3D computer-generated substructure metal tubes underneath the panels, each unique and perfectly matching the panels at their fixed positions. As mentioned, each panel had a different curved geometry, thus making traditional manufacturing of the panels extremely difficult. To solve this, an adaptable mold that can change shapes was used. So instead of making a different mold for each panel, they made a transformable mold that could be shaped into a specific panel and check for adaptability. Since Azerbaijan was also a remote country that had even very basic tools must be imported, the constructor had to generate all the production information associated with the exterior panels to be outsourced so that they could be manufactured then shipped to the site for installation by local workers. The panels are screwed to fittings on the space frame once constructed. Microchips are fitted to all the 16,000 panels, so each can be traced, dramatically accelerating the insula installation time of the panels. This video here shows the panel construction process and interviews of engineers. Before I show you the video, I'll introduce some of the scenes. Here, four iron workers are sitting on the piece of tube steel of the space frame. The width of the balance beam is just four inches. In this scene, shows that each panel is lifted by a crane, then fitted into position by hand. They have to position each panel with just a half inch of tolerance. Lastly, in this part, the crew has to line up the bracket on each corner of four bolts of the space frame plate. Finally, here you the 30 second video and end the presentation. Thank you. 
shape. That had to be a really challenging engineering uh, feat. Yeah, we have concrete core and we have a steel space frame which allows us to do this free form. These panels, have they been custom made? We're able to solve this by making a mold which actually can adapt. So instead of doing different molds for every panel, it's like we make a mold which transforms and adapts that shape. That every panel is different. It's all complex geometry. Some of them are flat, some of them are single curvature, some of them are double curvature. This is amazing. We're riding all the way up to the top of the culture center right now.